So here are my favorite settings when using this compressor on drums and the mix bus. A true classic, which is often misunderstood and perhaps a bit confusing to work with. The mighty API 2500. It's been in my toolbox ever since the beginning of time because I love the way it sounds and it's also very versatile. But this is far more than just a love letter to a compressor. It's a deep dive, it's a complete guide and everything you need to know about working with API 2500. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to mention that I usually use this on the stereo bus or on the drum bus. But either way, I rarely slam it. And I'm not a big compressor slammer. I use them more in a more gentle way, uh, unless I do parallel compression. But a good way to learn compression or learn any plugin is by overdoing it first. It's a little bit like when you try to learn a new filter in Photoshop. The best way to learn to know what it's doing is by first putting it 100%. And then you can back off a little bit just to get a little bit of that effect. So as I said, the first section is very basic. Got attack, ratio, release. Uh, but generally for a punchier drum sound, I would go for a slower attack and a faster release. And the interesting thing with this compressor is that if you put your release time all the way to the right, then you get a variable release. So you can really fine tune your release time. The part of this compressor that I find the most interesting and fun is the middle section. And here you find the thrust and the feedback and feed forward settings. So let's dive into those. But to fully understand this topic, it's really important to first understand the concept of sidechain. But before that, I wanted to invite you to my brand new Studio T Break chat room and community. It's completely free and there's a link in the description below. It's a great place for sharing and learning and connecting with other people, but also for fun and geeky conversations. And I hope to see you there. And I would say that a sidechain is a little bit like if I was sitting holding a volume knob and whenever the sound gets loud, I turn it down, right? My brain will be the compressor circuit, um, and my hand is doing the action, and the sound that is actually passing through the knob is the main signal. So then, what is the sidechain? Well, I would say the sidechain will be my ears and what it's hearing from the speakers, because depending on what I'm hearing, I will then make my judgment, and that can differ. What I'm hearing might not be the same thing as passing through the knob. There are two different things. And the same thing happens in a compressor automatically. You have two signals. One is the audio signal passing through, and the other one is the one that is fed into the brain of the compressor so that the compressor can make its decisions on based on your settings of attack and release. And another common feature to find in a sidechain is a high pass filter because you don't want the compressor to hear too much bass. API took this a bit further. So what's the main difference? Well, you have two settings and norm is basically bypassed. Loud, instead of high passing the sound, they added a shelf to, to the sound which starts from the bottom and goes all the way up to the top of the range which gives you a boost in the highs but also a dip in the lows, right? And the result is that you get a much more transparent compression. And when it's set to medium, you kind of get the same thing but you get a, a little dip in the lows and a boost in the highs. And the mid-range is flat. And I personally keep this setting on loud uh, most of the times both for drums and the mix bus. So what is new and old? Here you can get two very different distinct tones. New is a lot faster and snappier and more modern. And old is more smooth and a little bit slower and more vintage sounding. So what is feed forward and feed back type of compression? So when the sound comes into the compressor and it gets split into two, when we have it set to feed forward, it simply does that at the input stage. In the feedback mode, the audio path gets fed by the input but the sidechain gets fed by the output, which is kind of strange, but that's how it works. Delay in the sidechain, because first it has to travel through the compressor circuit untouched into the output and then back. So that delay will make the compressor a little slower in general. Um, it won't be as snappy and fast. Let's hear the two in action on drums. So the knee setting is also another characteristic. So even if you have your attack very fast and you have a very snappy compressor, you can still soften up the curve a little bit by using soft knee. Or you can have a very soft compression and you can have a hard knee making that soft compression a bit harder, uh, giving it another dimension as well to play with. And the cool thing with this compressor is that you can get a lot of different tones using all of these controls. You can combine a snappy, modern kind of compressor with a clean setting, loud, using soft knee, or you can get a 
more vintage sounding compressor that is more um, colored with a hard knee, which is more aggressive. And of course your attack and release time and all that will also affect it. So the big question is, how do I use this compressor on drums and mix bus? If I want to go for a punchier drum sound, I will go for a slower attack time and a faster release time. And almost always using the loud setting. And generally a feedback type compression. If I want a much more snappier, more modern drum sound, I would go for a feed forward type compression. And when it comes to the knee setting, I tend to keep it on medium. And when it comes to the amount of compression, I tend to go for a 4 to 1 ratio. And you will see my needle moving around 1 dB occasionally, not the whole time. And when it comes to the mix bus, I tend to use it even more sparingly. 